After a year, they're back. The creators of Focused Life Force Energy have also been using it for a year, and so can you. Go to our website and try it for 15 days. No credit card required. You have absolutely nothing to lose. FLFE's mission is to support the optimal conditions for the evolution of consciousness and the creation of environments with high consciousness fields. These fields provide a sanctuary that are helpful for our personal growth and increased health, while we remain highly functional in our everyday work life. FLFE is designed to clear the negative history from your home and property to help you get a fresh start every day, free of any negative influence. The high vibration, high consciousness energy field and folding your property supports a positive environment, helps uplift your personal energy and increases the potential for positive relationships. You are listening to Veritas. If this is your first time, welcome home. To listen to tonight's full interview and all of our material, join the Veritas family and click on the subscribe button at veritasradio.com. You can make your purchase with a credit card, PayPal, cash, check, money order, and even cryptocurrency. We are now accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Don't forget to visit the Veritas store for Focused Life Force Energy, MMS, CBD Pure Hemp Oil, Divinia Water, Pure Organic Sulfur, flash drives with all our Sanitas and Veritas seasons, and other great products. And if you want to get in touch with Mel, want to be a guest on this radio program, have a guest suggestion, or have feedback, just click on the contact button of our website at veritasradio.com. And if you're listening on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share it. And click the bell to be notified when new interviews are available. And now, here's your host, Mel Fabregas. And directly from British Columbia, Canada, I'd like to welcome Jeffrey Steckman and Clayton Stedman back to Veritas. Hello, Jeff and Clayton. Welcome back. How are you? Hello, Mel. Great to be with you. Great to be with you, too, on this fluffy versary. That's a great word that you just uh, <laughs> mentioned to me. I thought it was funny and cool. It's been a year since I personally, and by the way, I don't recommend anything unless I try it. And I've used it for a year now. And sometimes I, I do a test, folks. I disconnect it for a few days just to see how the environment changes. And it's, I have to put it back two or three days later because it, the feeling is, is tangible. I don't know how to explain it because I'm a very tangential, I mean, not, not tangential, I have to have a tangible object in front of me for me to touch and say, this is it, this is a rock, this is a doorknob, this is a glass of water. But I still can't explain how this works. Why don't you give us a summary for those who didn't listen to last year's interview, which by the way, folks, if you haven't listened to them, go back to last year's interview and listen to it first. But for those, just give us a quick summary. I'll start. This is Jeffrey, and then I can hand it over to Clayton. FLFE is uh, a service that activates a high consciousness field. So we discovered a technology and developed it further, which is really a consciousness technology. It's a um, activation of a high consciousness field that is really similar in the way that human consciousness can bless someone. Or when you think of someone and um, you're going to dial them on the phone and they think of you. We believe that as a human being, we have immense capabilities, uh, including the, the ability to connect in a quantum way with someone else, um, sort of field to field anywhere on the planet. And that is what FLFE does with a unique identifier, say an address, legal address coordinates, we uh, are able to activate a field, a high consciousness field that creates an environment at that location anywhere in the world, and it can be accessed through our website and uh, a free trial. Pass it over to you, Clayton. Yes, thanks, Jeff. Um, we often forget how powerful we are as humans, and when people talk about quantum association or we prefer quantum association versus quantum entanglement. Uh, we may not remember, or we occasionally remember when 
we get that thought that somebody's going to call us and the next thing the phone rings that we're powerful creative uh, co-creative beings and we believe that human thought the way that it's created in the cranium of the head uh, is a type of quantum connector we just think of quantum association typically through you know maybe a tesla like laboratory where there's all these you know electrical waves going through the air or there's all this you know really extraordinary looking equipment with lots of dials and and graphs and and uh, maybe different things to measure vibration in that environment and we have all that but it's really it's really quite simple we're just trying to recreate the gift that humans were given See, that's a very good point, because I wonder, through through this year, I keep wondering, how is this possible, that I disconnect and connect and I feel the difference? I'm thinking in my mind, is this something like a bad cave? Is it something like a laboratory <laughs> with a bunch of lever, lovers? What is it? And perhaps it's a secret sauce that you have and you don't want to talk about it. But obviously, there's a source for the energy, or you're actually tapping into some kind of energy that you're shooting out towards the my addressing in this example or other people's addresses or tele or cell phones. Can you explain? I just want to be able to understand, you know, how things tick. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jeffrey. Yeah. The original invention was um, in a house and uh, it was stacks of, of plates, coils, spheres, um, shapes that were electrically connected and the electrical connection would run from the top of one stack to the bottom and up to the next and up through all of the stacks in the room and through the tuning of that high speed alternating current at different voltages um, there was the sweet spot that was pulling in life force energy G or prana um, And it's the machine. It's involved beyond that now to, to a bit different. But in the original machine, you were pulling in this life force energy, chi prana, in input stacks, as I described. And then there's one output stack that would concentrate this energy in a, in a place. And it was very highly concentrated and high consciousness. And you could put something in it, and it would be charged up or changed by the energy uh, and originally water was put in there and the water was used for arthritis relief of arthritis pain um, and we discovered at one point that with a photograph or another identifier you could charge up or have an instant quantum energy so it's really an activation of a field somewhere else in the world with no delay as long as you have a unique identifier that is in this part of the machine this highly highly energetic space um, like a legal address or coordinates or a cell phone uh, cellular device number that that becomes a unique identifier and now the two are connected and these instructions and they're written actually written instructions, Mel, that, that go into the space that specify the field in at, at the other location. Just like if you think of someone and you're sending them loving energy, you're sending them healing thoughts, that that now is in that field, you know, half across, halfway across the planet instantly. So that's the Uh, the mechanism, uh, originally, it, it was a customer came on FLFV, we would print off the sheet that had the address, the instructions, and we would put it into the space. And and then when they canceled, we would pull it back out. And so if you can imagine, we're like flipping through, you know, a stack of paper, finding the right address to pull out. Um, but now it's all tied into a... Uh, database as though it's on the machine so now when you go onto your control panel and you turn it off or you 
use your, your you run the level of consciousness up or down, which we'll talk about later, the slider. Um, it's instant. It's as though it's in the machine, the instruction is in the machine itself, in the highly energetic space, the quantum field. Is this technology related to any of Nikola Tesla's work at all? Yeah, this is Clayton. Maybe I'll pick that up. It, it's absolutely connected to it. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Well, this is where it gets interesting, and we may pass this back and forth, Jeff. Um, a lot of people ask us to see the machine, to see the technology, and uh, describe it in, in more detail than we have. And the place that we come back to, Mel, is our kind of theme song in FLFE, if there is one, is we try to do what's in the highest and best interest of all creation. And we use uh, kinesiology as a as a, a main focus to evaluating what our actions are. And every time we've tested if it's in the highest and best interest of all creation to go into minutia about the type of technology and how it works, uh, which we can, um, we, we, we've always gotten to know. So I don't like to be disrespectful to people when they ask. And if I was you know, a subscriber to a service like this, and I am subscribers to other types of service and experiment with them, you know, I, I do ask those types of questions. And, you know, sometimes they tell me certain bits of information, sometimes they don't. And so I, I, I don't want to avoid the, the, the inquiry. And, you know, we've always gotten just to do the work we do and not share it in too much detail. No, I understand. I'm yeah. just playing devil's advocate. I'm just playing the open-minded skeptic that I am. And I know that many of our, my listeners are too. And believe me, folks, for 12 months, I've been trying in my mind to say, could it be me? Could it be me that just, I purchased a subscription. I tried it for free first. I felt that it worked. So I subscribed for a year now. How much of this is just me playing in my mind? But then when I turn it off, I physically feel it. I don't know how to mm. explain it. Mm -hmm. So for the skeptics out there, how much mm. of it is them just bringing their own energy? Mm. Well, I think there's always some of that is, as we've said, human, the human being is so powerful. Um, and many, many FLFP subscribers, um, turn on the service, but they don't tell their spouse. Um, and they, or of course their dog <laughs> and they see what happens. Um, so there's that situation where you can observe others and what others uh, feel or what changes for them. And then we've also on the website in the, what we call the evidence section or the evidence page, um, we look for ways to, you know, forms of evidence to show the FLFV effects um, and what occurs with the high consciousness field. So those are there. And, and part of it is experience is we've done surveys uh, with different, different uh, programs or different kind of new information in the field. Um, and we, people count the difference, you know, that they notice. Um, and then we've done other experiments with, with other kinds of instruments as well. You mentioned the, yeah. oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Clayton. Well, I, thought I, I thought I'd mention just one or two more things. Um, we have had people wonder if it's just a placebo effect. That's just a word we didn't mention. Right. And that's why we have the on and off um, switches in your control panel. You can turn off the EMF influence alone. You can move the consciousness slider up and down, which is a new uh, feature we put in last year. And we've had many people that uh, have do done double blind studies uh, where they, as Jeff said, don't tell their spouse and they watch for the difference. Obviously, pets, unless you have a, unless you're an animal communicator, they don't know that you've done anything different. Um, we've had people who ride horses in groups and when they show up with their with FLFE on their phone, it has a 300 foot bubble. All the horses calm down. Uh, we have you know lots and lots of stories like that, probably hundreds. Um, so it may be partially placebo. 
and there is a technology and it does create an environment and we have um, numerous uh, sort of studies now done by the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which we'll talk about later, and gas discharge visualization studies, which show a change in the environment in very quantifiable, scientifically validated ways as well. So we're going to have more and more evidence as we move forward with the company uh, because it just helps some people get over the disbelief that you know they can't see it, so they don't know if it works. You mentioned a photograph, for example. That's, your face is something very unique. Have you thought about having a subservice, if you will, where is your fingerprint, your iris in your eye, your face, something that is towards the individual and not a cell phone, which is a an attachment these days, an extra limb that we all carry with us, right? But if, mm -hmm. say, somebody's traveling and they don't have a phone with them because they want to be in the woods by themselves, mm -hmm. is there something in the future that you're looking at for a, a, a unique identifier, almost like a specific signature for each individual? Well, we do have object subscriptions, so you can um, send in a, a photograph of a pendant or a ring, um, something that you wear all the time uh, that's not a cell phone, so that that is available now. Um, and Mel, we've, we've really focused on environment um, rather than the individuals. So our You know, our focus is, is to activate this environment, this high consciousness field and the benefits of the environment. So it's, it's available to all, you know, that are in the environment. Um, and the cell phone and, or object, you know, creates an environment that moves with you and others benefit around you as you move, you know, you know through the city or into, into, into the forest and the trees and animals around you benefit from the additional life force energy. And I know that a lot of people have written to me saying that you're not there yet when it comes to international. Some people say, hey, I like to purchase this. I'm, I live in XYZ country, but I know that some countries do not have their public registry for, for residences mm -hmm. or businesses. It's not too accurate. Is that, are you working on that or is that still not available? We are, we are still, we're, we're working on it. It's not available yet, but it, it should be soon. So somebody like me that travels, say, a second home to another country, for example, the best way right now is to just have your cell phone. That's the closest that we have to that, right? Yes, that's the thing you can use, Mel, right now. And um, we are working on, as Jeff said, uh, on, the, on the same principle as a unique identifier, we, we've tested it and that if we... If you take a picture of the inside of your home, because that inside of that home is unique, if, if the, if the uh, I think it's an eight megapixel camera or higher, which a lot of phones have these days, then we can associate that property in the same way that we can use for an address. So we're just working out the technical details of that. So that will be, that will be coming. What so about, we'll be able to go anywhere in the planet. What about a ping? A GPS mm -hmm. ping. Somebody says, mm -hmm. hey, this is my ping. These are my coordinates of my mm -hmm. property. Would that help? Mm -hmm. Well, GPS, of course, does work anywhere in the world. And um, the what can come up with GPS is really where you're getting the data from. So if you've got your cell phone, um, some cell phones you can pull GPS data from, it can be... Um, not that accurate um and um of course there's you know google earth or maps and you can pull gps coordinates from there you know say in the center of your house um but we have found that um in different parts of the world there's just different access to different mapping programs and uh sometimes there can be you know if people are for instance in china we 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 have a number of customers in China, and they were attempting to use their phones to grab the GPS, and it, and it wasn't accurate. It was ending up in the next apartment and things like that. Uh, and the other thing, Mel, with GPS coordinates, it doesn't uh, doesn't tell you 
up and down. So if you're in a, say, a five-story apartment building, you could put the, you could get the GPS, but you wouldn't be able, we wouldn't know which floor. Mm. So interesting. Yeah. Mm. Because with that, when you're activating a high consciousness field, someone in where we ask that someone there knows and can encourage others to drink more water as well as themselves. I want you to um, discuss the, this water part in a moment, but I just thought what you said about China. Have you found any similarities and differences between the people who are subscribers, say, from Asia and Europe and North America, for example? Have you found any differences and similarities hmm. in what they report? Yeah, the, this is Clayton. The, uh, the feedback we're getting is similar in quality. And one of the distinctions that we've noticed is that if a country has a lower level of consciousness, the contrast or the difference between that country or that area <clears throat> and the level of the service, which is set at 560 or higher, and you can move it up and down now with a consciousness slider, that the contrast can be more noticeable if the area has a lower level of consciousness to begin with. Interesting. And so countries or areas, you know, countries that are not democratic, they tend not to be as high. That isn't always true if you have a benevolent leader. Uh, there was one that just passed over recently named uh, Sultan Qaboos in Oman. He was uh, the Sultan of the Sultans. And he transformed his country during his reign. Um, I know that because I lived there for a while. And the, the country was very low when it started, and it came up a lot. But it really depends on the environment that is created, which would potentially uh, make the contrast more noticeable. And this so is you, why, for example, this is yeah, why I ask you, you about China. To, yeah. yeah, I don't want to make China wrong, per se, but uh, they don't have as much freedom uh, in many ways that we have in North America. And so the level of consciousness of the of the country wouldn't be as high. That's exactly why I asked you that question. And the answer was great. The contrast is so much higher. So if somebody lives, and I'm not saying China here, somebody mm -hmm. lives under a dictatorship where you have absolutely no freedom and you're able to get this service, you're going to just rise above the herd in other ways. Yeah, we've had examples of uh, situations in uh, Africa, some and I can't go into detail about it, but they were extremely uh, dangerous situations. And uh, people put the service on and the environment just changed. All the, all the things that, they, that could have happened, that it could have really, really went bad. It turned out it, un, like unusual to the extraordinary. Like this stuff does, does not happen with these people. And so we've had, we've had some things like that that are pretty, uh, yeah, pretty interesting, pretty amazing. It's interesting that, I'm going to pick Oman. I have listeners and subscribers there too, in Saudi Arabia, many places in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as the, when they write to me, they do it almost as if uh, they're committing a crime. <laughs> Sometimes I send them USB drives with our programs and they call me and they say, disappeared. They stole it. Or mm -hmm. it, it, You see where I'm coming from. Certain countries, you know, this information seems to be, I don't know why any government would be against having their population be at their best because it's in their best mm -hmm. you know, interest, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to know, hard to know why. Um, you know, we tend to focus on just creating a positive environment and, and we've got customers all over the world now in different places. And, um, you know, creating that bubble of positivity, I believe, helps the whole country. You know, that that one property's rising can then affect the neighboring properties, affects the the whole the whole place. Um, but the other contrast that we see is with other factors other than than geography related to the country uh, in areas where there's mining. Uh, in areas where there's a lot of underground water, lava flow, uh, say at the bend of a river, that you can see low consciousness areas anywhere, 
any, in any country. Mm-hmm. Um, like a river will flow in a direction and the chi of the river continues to go straight when the river takes a bend. And that chi flowing through, you would think, well, that would be positive, right? There's like more chi, but but it's actually a flow of chi and it, it tends to pull energy away from these river towns and have them be lower consciousness or lower life force energy there. And so bringing that back in with that fill of feed can, you know, can be helpful and that it can create a greater contrast like Clayton was saying. Do you think combining FLFE with grounding, mm. does, that have an, does that have an effect? Mm. Yeah, we actually have a grounding program on FLFE, Mel, and um, because of the kind of extreme energy requirements of the grounding program, it's only active when you're less than five miles an hour uh, on a mobile device, but it's, it's on the properties all the time. So what we're looking to do this year is to do some uh, blood work analysis, like live blood work analysis. There's a wonderful documentary on the internet. I think it's called Earthing. Sure. I'm not sure. Yes. But yeah. There's a gentleman who, what I remember is he's underneath his house in Alaska. The house is on a hill and he's just lying on the ground. That's and, the first uh, documentary. The second one just came up uh, lately. Uh, Clay is his name as well. And yeah, wonderful documentary, especially the first one. Yeah, and I really like the fact that they did live blood cell analysis and seeing the difference in how the blood clustered and flowed mm-hmm. and even the the quality of the energy around the cells. And so we've done lots of experiments like that that aren't done. We didn't do that one in particular, but we've done lots of experience that experiments that aren't validated through a third party like the Institute of Noetic Sciences. So we tend not to put that type of evidence up on our website because it can be biased and we're trying to be as third party, you know, verified as possible. So that's one of the things that we, um, that we'd like to get done this year is to find a good lab and have, you know, um, so before FLFE and then, you know, after half an hour, after an hour, after two hours, and we don't want to take all the person's blood, but uh, just a little bit (laughs) so that we can see the difference. Well, it's interesting how you say that when you put it under a microscope before and after grounding, you see the effects. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a huge advocate for grounding. I'm grounding every time. The only times I don't ground is when I'm in a car. And I asked somebody, how do I ground when I'm driving in my car? And (laughs) I still have to practice what they're telling me. But apparently you have to drop a chain, a chain that just touches the floor as you drive. I still don't don't know if that's effective, but I've been told that that's the way to go. But food, nutrition, energy. I believe you've upgraded FLFE to actually help energize food. Please let me know what updates you've uh, gone through. So I'll start and pass it over to you, Clayton. So December of 2019... We added um, what we call Energize Food 3.0, which was an upgrade of of an energizing of food that we had already done, which the original program was just adding additional life force energy to food when it comes into our mouth. And so this was adding life force energy that would then go into your gastrointestinal system. And with that additional energy, add in the digestion and absorption. But the upgrade was energizing specific nutrients. So again, the way we FLFE works, we're creating these programs or written documents that are request of divinity and they're in this field. And so instead of now initially energizing all the food that's eaten, we're saying energize the magnesium, energize the vitamin D, energize the zinc. And so what we've found is that that is assisting in the absorption and people are, have an easier time reaching you know, closer to optimal levels uh, with the food they're eating and the vitamins they're already taking. Do you want to add to that, Clayton? 
Yeah, it's uh, you said it well. It, uh, the metaphor that I imagined when we were researching this was that, you know, I went to a monastery for the weekend and there was 200 monks and I, you know, I got there just before lunch and I was eating my lunch and they're all, they're all praying over their food. But then let's say the monks finished their meal and I was um, still eating that they would be pray each one of them would be praying for a specific nutrient in that food. So yes, the vitamin, uh, the, the vitamin D, the magnesium, as Jeff said, all those individual nutrients. So there's a, a positive energetic uh, contribution from FLFE as soon as food hits your saliva. And now we're adding individual prayers, like those individual monks praying for each particular element of the food. And, uh, you know, we have quite a few of those nutrients on right now. And then uh, we're just going to add more and more as as time goes on so that we'll be able to benefit, uh, you know, from all the different aspects of the food, including what we've done, Mel, is we've actually energize the the nutrients so what we do is we support the the body's intelligence that as it's as it's moving these nutrients through the gastrointestinal system and into the bloodstream through all the digestive processes assimilating them into the organs completing their functions and then moving them all the way through the elimination system right out of the body so we've energized these particular nutrients through that whole pathway in the body and people are finding they're just not wanting to eat as much. And um, I think that's going to be another one of these experiments with the um, with the live blood cell analysis that's, that could make a big difference. My guests today are Jeffrey Stuckman and Clayton Stedman from Focus Life Force Energy. And when it comes to water, for example, I just thought of the work of Dr. the late Dr. Masaru Emoto. With intention, you change the structure of water. Is FLFE doing the same for food? Yeah, yes, this is Jeffrey. You could you could say that with this energizing, and and we're asking for the optimal um, uptake uh, in the gastrointestinal system, but also in the cells. So that food we're we're seeing in people's experience less seasonal you know, uh, downtimes, you know, better mood, more personal energy, increased sa satiation, better sleep. And there's a survey of, of subscribers before and after we did this upgrade on, on the website in the um, evidence section. So, yeah, I believe you're right. That's an interesting way to put it, um, that there's, there's some tweak with this extra life force energy in the nutrient that it's allowing it to uptake. Um, in a different way, maybe it's more, um, you know, beneficial having that life force energy. There's additional structuring that occurs naturally. Um, and again, as Clayton said, the innate intelligence of the body is doing the work. It's doing the choosing of which nutrients it wants. Um, but with that extra energy, extra structuring, whatever's occurring there, um, you know, we're seeing it move into the body more easily. Perhaps the body's using less energy uh, and it's moving into where it's needed through the innate intelligence. When it comes to us living in this electromagnetic soup that most people live in, most people have Wi-Fi, they have a cell phone tower, you know, in every corner, and now you see the advent of 5G, mm -hmm. short, short wave energy and Based on what the experts are telling me, this is something that needs to be tested in order for them to roll it out. And many countries are saying no to it until it's proven safe. Where does FLFE stand when it comes to uh, transmuting 5G or, or cell phone radiation or Wi-Fi? Well, we could direct you to the website. There, there's a EMF mitigation page. Um, we've made some breakthroughs there. Um, and we have some, as Clayton mentioned earlier, GDV camera or gas discharge visualization is a sensitive instrument that can, could see the difference in the energy. And 
So we have some studies that show that there is quite a chaotic environment uh, in your standard urban setting today with all the routers and um, pieces of electronics, you know, smog, pieces of the waveforms, um, cell towers, smart meters. Um, and after FLFE with our EMF mitigation, there was a cleaning up of that chaotic spiky energy into a much more sort of harmonized band so that that's there on the website and Clayton do you want to talk about how we did that it was quite a quite an interesting process yeah what, what happened Mel is that um, every week we test all of the properties on FLFE so that they are at 560 or higher 98 percent of the time that's our guarantee and we were noticing that some properties were dropping below 560 on the Hawkins uh, map of consciousness. And we would call the customers and talk to them about, you know, what's changed in your neighborhood. Uh, the, the energy is not as high. And it was a couple of weeks ago. And they would, we would hear things like, well, I just got a new smart meter put in. Oh, a, a new cell phone tower just mm. went up across the street or down the block. Or... Um, you know, I just upgraded my router uh, or I just got Wi-Fi at home. I didn't have it. And so we made a correlation between the level of consciousness dropping and the introduction of ad additional electromagnetic frequencies. So at this point, it's probably good to talk about the distinction between, you know, life supporting EMFs and life uh, diminishing EMFs. I mean, human beings, we uh, emanate electromagnetic frequencies uh, the earth uh, uh, you know emanates electromagnetic frequencies our dogs do our uh, even plants do the secret life of plants is a wonderful book that demonstrates that and so we had to do a lot of research on this topic because as we were finding ways to mitigate the the influence of consciousness lowering EMS is what we've come up with a term to make that distinction we found that the standard meter, such as a tri-field meter, didn't recognize the harmonization that we were seeing with the gas discharge visualization device. That's why we had to go to a more sensitive instrument that can measure that subtle influence. And the two main things that we discovered were that if we raise the level of consciousness of a device, so let's say your cell phone, if we put the cell phone at 580 or higher on the Hawkins map of consciousness, that there was a tipping point where all the emanations from the phone became positive. And so that cell phone now became life enhancing versus life diminishing. We actually have a picture on our evidence page of a dog named Cosmo who is sleeping with his head on the router in a home. <laughs> really? What happens is, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, so this rudder calibrates at 600. So what happens is that in addition to raising the level of consciousness of the device, we discovered that shungite is the most appropriate material uh, in existence to harmonize EMFs. And so harmonization is different than blocking. So if you're looking to deal with EMFs, you can try to block them, you can try to deflect them, you can try to dissipate them, uh, you can try to redirect them. Another way to say that, or or you can try to harmonize them. So you try to take them and actually make them positive. It's like an Aikido type of uh, approach to things. So we found that um, I had some friends that did an experiment with a block of smart meters in a, or a wall of smart meters in an apartment building, and they taped pieces of shungite on the outside of the smart meter. And they put plants in there before that, and the plants were shriveling and moving away from the smart meters. And when they put the shungite on the smart meters, the plants grew towards the smart meters and actually started looking vital. And so we found a way to include the energetic essence or energetic signature of shungite into the FLFE environment in such a way that any of this electronic smog that, that you've talked about, Mel, or, or electronic waveforms that kind of break off, it's like a when you're on the, when you're on the edge of a of a Wi-Fi signal or a cell signal, so you have one bar on your phone or your computer, there's a lot of fragmented waveforms because the signal just can't quite get there um, strong enough. So this contributes to that smog. And we found that if we have a uh, the energetic signature of FLFE 
sorry, of um, Shungite moving out from the Ephelafi environment, that it, if we do it properly, it will harmonize those incoming energies. And it actually raises the level of consciousness on the average property about four more points than when we didn't have it on. So that's a little bit of a story, but that's um, that's what we discovered. Let me ask you this. I purchase a subscription when I travel and I'm staying at a second home because the, the service is not available in that country. So I buy a subscription for my cell phone. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a lot of people turn off their cell phone at night or they just put them on airplane mode. If I have the service, are you telling me that when it's on, it's actually better to leave it on and not on airplane mode because these waves are being transmuted into something positive? Yes. I mean, actually, the way FLFE works, we're, act, we're, we're using the unique identifier of the cell phone number um, in a jurisdiction. So in the United States, there's only one cell phone with this number. So whether the cell phone is on or off, as long as it has the SIM card still installed, it is a unique identifier for the FLFE field. So the, the cell phone does not have to be on in order to have the field. So within four feet of the phone, it's a mitigated zone of of the uh, EMFs, both from the phone and from outside. And yes, it is. We believe it is more positive. Um, It's like, as Clayton said, it's life enhancing. It's increasing the life force energy available, the, the level of consciousness of the four foot bubble that you're in. And it is positive. So, you, you know, it's. It's not, you know, if you feel more comfortable, you could turn it off and that four foot bubble will still protect you from incoming or not protect is not the right word. It's the four foot bubble will harmonize these consciousness lowering EMFs um, that are coming from nearby routers and cell towers and so forth. I keep saying, including 5G. I keep saying transmuting due to my lack of knowledge when it comes to this, but harmonizing is the best uh, term then. So mm-hmm. somebody that subscribes to the home service and they have Wi-Fi, same applies to them. The Wi-Fi will be harmonized for the better. Yes. Yes. That's what we're seeing. And uh, we we did an experiment with a 5G router, one of the new 5G home routers. It's a little different than what you, you see on a pole in the 5G rollouts, but Uh, This was a gaming router. It had pretty high power. And we saw the level of consciousness in the property go up with FLFE on, and EMF mitigation on, with that router powered up, that the router itself was at 600 on the Hawkins map. The, The area around it was higher in consciousness. It was actually beneficial. And the, you know, the, what we ask is people don't don't believe us like experience it yourself and that's why in you know in your control panel you can turn off the emf mitigation separately and what people notice what i notice particularly is the tension in my body like when i turn off the emf mitigation i feel like a tightness like my shoulders kind of rise up near my ears, you know, I feel like I tense in my body and I feel anxious. And then when I turn the EMF mitigation back on, I can feel my body relax and I can take a deep breath. It feels like I'm in the country. You know, I can take a deep breath again. So, so I wonder if this sort of epidemic of anxiety that we have in our society is related to EMFs. Very, very possible and i'm gonna just you just brought something to my mind that i haven't shared but i will i it's not that i'm a stressful or stressed out person but i'm always on the move i'm always working i'm always doing something and that has an effect obviously physically and mentally so for years i was taking this herb called 5-htp which helped made me calm made me just more you know focused and i noticed something the other day i decided you know let me just start getting rid of certain herbs that I've been taking just to see what the effect is. Years ago, if I stopped taking it, I could feel the anxiety coming back because I was too stressed out. But about a week and a half ago, I stopped taking it, and I haven't felt that I need it at all. 
and I can only attribute it to this. Could this be possible? It's interesting. You could do an experiment, Mal, this is Clayton, and you could turn off the EMF influence in your control panel and see if you notice that, uh, that tension coming back. I will do that and report. And another story I want to tell you folks, on this second property that I have, you know, it's at the beach, there's different towers. And I remember this couple retired. They were both doctors. They retired. They wanted just to spend time at the beach. And they bought a penthouse. And right above them is a cell tower. You know, oh, so yeah. some buildings <clears throat> rent the roof to put a cell tower. Yes. And I remember mm -hmm. them moving there. And I always look at that tower and I'm thinking, who wants to live right underneath that? Not even mm. two months later, their wife developed a very, very strong form of cancer. I wonder if that mm. had anything to do with it. Somebody like that, that subscribed to your service, say in the United States, this is in another country, could those waves would have been harmonized? Well, we we don't make health claims. Of course. Um, we're careful not to do that. And, um, you know, from what we're seeing, uh, people people are feeling less tension, less stress, better sleep. So all the physical, you know, manifestations of those energies or the perturbation of those energies seems to be abated. Um, so that would, that would indicate that there's, um, you know, the physical body is affected in a different way. Uh, and then the GDV camera sees less spiky energy present. Um, and those that's, you know, our biological system is an energetic system. And when there's spiky energy or incoming chaotic energy, uh, it has to have an effect and we feel it in our, in the stress and sleep in other ways. Um, so, you know, that's sort of our, um, you know, secondhand way of seeing the, the positive effects and, and whether it could it help in that situation or not, we really, really don't know. Well, what might be interesting, Mel, if somebody like that, uh, and there's lots and lots of cell phone towers going on top of apartment buildings now and, and condominium towers, high rises, um, we could test the level of consciousness before the uh, service went on, which we don't particularly do that for individuals because we just can't do that and offer the service at the price we do. If somebody lived in a apartment right below a cell phone tower like that, then I'd be willing to test that property before and test it after the service went on. And my assumption is that that apartment would be in the high 590s, if not over 600. And the reason I say that is because the router in most of our, well, in all the FLFE homes right now around the world, the, the router within a foot of the router, it's a 600 field. So we assume that, you know, you could actually put three or four routers around you and it would be a, a meditation zone. It would be a high consciousness zone. Right. And, and, that's, and that's the reason why we're really careful with the language because consciousness lowering EMFs, that's the area where we feel comfortable in measuring the influence because we're, we're pretty good at kinesiology. We're, we're very good at it. As I mentioned to you, I'm, I like tangible things to be able to touch and determine and, and measure mm -hmm. and observe. When it comes to any ENF meter, is it possible to US, uh, use an EFF, EMF meter before and after you turn on FLFE? At this point, the your standard meter will not tell a difference. Um, they're not measuring the subtle changes so that you would still show perhaps the same amount of energy coming in. And it's not just distinguishing between whether it's uh, consciousness lowering or life, you know, negative for life or consciousness raising. So it, but there's still energy there. Um, the GDV camera is, is a way to, to measure that um, difference. It's more, it's more of a subtle energy uh, device. And we're looking to do it with plant studies, where we're looking at plant growth in the two environments. Um, and we certainly would love to hear from your audience if there's people who have other devices that they feel may be sensitive enough to tell the difference. We'd love to try uh, additional devices as well. 
Let me go back to the food part. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody was going to say something. Yeah, I just add one thing, Mel. This is Clayton. We have had uh, subscribers turn turn the service off and they have a, you know, a new smart meter put in it and they put their hands right on the smart meter. And usually not everybody's a good sort of tester or they're not intuitive, but people will feel, uh, I don't say repulsed, but they'll tend to want to move away from that influence. And then they turn the service on and then they want to touch it. So that's something that anybody can do. And our bodies are, we believe, if not the best meter of measuring truth versus falsehood, it's got to be at least one of the best. Now, not everybody is really sensitive like that, but you could do that experiment with your router. Most of us have a router in the house. And every device in the home that um, sends uh, or emits any consciousness-lowering EMFs will have the same effect. So when we were beta testing this, we had some of these high-efficiency bulbs. They look like a little corkscrew. And I would hold the fixture just above the bulb because they were hot. And we would turn the service off and I would feel like my body moving away, wanting to move away from it. And then when we turned the service on, I wanted, I wanted to hold it because it was now sending positive energy. So that's something that anybody can do with their own body. Let me go back to food for a moment before we take our break. As you know, a lot of people just eat food but because of the lack of nutrients that is on our food supply these days, because as every year goes by, we have less and less, we have more synthetic stuff added to it and people absorb less. And a lot of people buy supplements not knowing that they're not bioavailable. And I keep saying that all the time. Please, folks, when you buy supplements, make sure that they are, you know, phytonutrients and they're bioavailable. Because if they are not, you're probably going to be absorbing about 10% and the rest is going to go down the toilet into the water supply. So when it comes to FLFE, does it impact the bioavailability of nutrients and also the bioreception of your body? Mm -hmm. So we're using, again, kinesiology testing and how people feel through surveys and, and reports. Um, and we're seeing an increased absorption of nutrients from the food and vitamins that we're eating. So without changing the diet, um, people are feeling, you know, their our kinesiology measuring shows vitamin D levels are rising from, from the food they're eating. And people are able to, um, you know, reach those optimal levels or at least get close to them um, when before they would have had a lot of difficulty from the food they're eating. So now we have to prove this with, with blood tests, nutritional studies. Um, and that's, you know, in the works for this year, but, uh, from our kinesiology testing and from people's personal experience, we believe that energizing the nutrients increases bioavailability and also into the, into the gut, but also through into the cell wall, through the cell walls, into the places it's needed. And I know you have to walk on a fine line when it comes to saying certain things that may not be attributed to, you know, health claims. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thinking of allergies. As you know, the amount of allergies that we see these days is just something that we did not see when we were growing up. I guarantee you that the three of us did not see the amount of allergies that we see now. Yeah, that's true. Anything that FLFE can do to mitigate that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, we uh, we haven't really asked our customers about allergic response. I think that might be worth uh, putting a survey together, Jeff. Mm -hmm. and when we're doing our nutritional analysis, there might be some way to um, measure the the factors that go into contributing to allergic reactions. But in the at this point, Mel, I wouldn't know what else to say about that. Um, the other thought that I had about food is there's a gentleman named, I think his name's Jerry Tennant. And he talks a lot about <laughs> yes. um, the positive energy in electrons, food, uh, electrons, voltage. Yeah. Yes. And so that's, that sort of relates to the, to our theory of adding positive life force energy to food makes it more like an organic type food where it has more 
you know, organic food. I mean, I've eaten enough organic food now and, and conventionally grown food in different soils to, you know, I firmly believe there's a difference in most of the organic stuff that I get. Not all of it seems to be as, as vital, but there's definitely some places where uh, the food is grown and it's more vital and it has a different experience in my body. I'm convinced of that. Um, so that's another metaphor of increasing the available energy in the body or in the food, it translates to the body. And um, I would think, you know, the assumption is that it would have influenced positively all the biochemical processes. I'm so glad that you mentioned Dr. Jerry Tennant, because if, if I have to say some of the eureka moments that I've had in the past 10 years, having had Dr. Tennant on my program, explaining what, you know, healing is voltage and how mm -hmm. he almost died. And this is how I started grounding after listening to him and how you have to bring electrons to your body and the things that you do that make you lose electrons and that's why your immune system goes down. Folks, listen to our interview with Dr. Jerry Tennant. It's just a, a life-saving interview and I'm so glad that you're familiar with his work and you're correlating some of his accomplishments to, to FLFE. Yeah, we're trying to be respectful of his extraordinary contribution and make a correlation. But, you know, Jeff, I think we should reach out to Dr. Tennant and see how he's measuring his results. He might be able to help us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll do that. Certainly. And we're coming to the middle of uh, the show. We're going to take a break shortly. But let me just say, tell you folks, you still offer the 15-day trial, correct? Yes. Folks, you have absolutely nothing to lose. If you are an open-minded skeptic, and you know, folks, my job is to inquire. I'm a, I have an overdeveloped sense of wonder. I always want to know things. And what do you have to lose? Just go to our website, veritasradio.com, and click on the FLFE link that we have there. And just try it for 15 days. They don't even ask you for your credit card, I believe. So if you feel that it made a difference and you want to continue, do so. That's how I did it. I started with a trial. And then I stopped and I felt the difference, not only with me, but the occupants in my home, my wife, my daughter, my dog. And I thought, wait a second, this, this is a little bit disharmonious here. Let's turn this on again. And the next day, guess what? Things went back to normal, quiet and peace. And folks, there's no price for that. So try it. Now, how can people learn more about fluffy can you can I call it fluffy? Is that an endearing thing? I say it like that because of my friend, uh, my friend uh, Regina. Regina Meredith is the one that I keep hearing that she calls it fluffy. Yes, yeah. Once once Regina started, there was just no stopping it. It, it started as a joke uh, that because F L F E, if you read it, it looks like fluffy, and a friend yeah. started calling it fluffy, and then Re Regina took it and ran with it. So we're we're on board now. Yeah, Regina, don't be asking me for royalties. But yes, you 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 feel it. I mean, you feel it's. I don't know the, the, the relationship between the word and what I'm saying, but it feels fluffy. It feels balanced. It feels harmonious. I cannot put my word into it, but it's almost as if you had a long night's sleep. You know, you wake up in the morning all relaxed. This is how you feel all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, don't go anywhere. I have another hour, and we have a lot to discuss of the new and improved Focus Life Force Energy. My guests today are Jeffrey Stuckman and Clayton Stetman. Much more when we return. Thank you for listening to the first part of this important Veritas interview. To listen to the rest and all of our material, proceed to the member section or join the Veritas family by subscribing. Click on the subscribe button at veritasradio.com. You can make your purchase with a credit card, PayPal, cash, check, money order, and even cryptocurrency. We are now accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Don't forget to visit the Veritas store for Focus Life Force Energy, MMS, CBD Pure Hemp Oil, Divinia Water, Pure Organic Sulfur, flash drives with all our Sanitas and Veritas seasons, and other great products. And if you're listening on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share it. And click the bell to be notified when new interviews are available. Now, proceed to the members section or subscribe to listen to the rest of the interview. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for listening to Veritas. Because you don't want to believe. You want to know. <laughs>